Welcome to Comics with Dan. This is not only the Comics Commute number 34, but a very special edition of the Comics Commute, because I am filming this on my way to Baltimore Comic Con. So I figured I'll talk a little bit about what I've read in the past couple days, because the last time I recorded a Comics Commute was just on Tuesday. Um, thankfully, I've read quite a bit. Uh, and I'll talk about what I have coming up next week, which might be nothing, but we'll get to that. Go Steelers. So, I read Batman Superman World's Finest, number 31. I read Batman The Last Halloween, number 0, uh, which is a reprint of the Long Halloween special that came out years ago. Uh, I also read Ice Cream Man, number 41. And I also read Superman, number 18? I think it was eight, 18 or 19. I think it's 18. Um, which is an absolute power time. So, that's what I read. Uh, next week, on League of Comic Geeks, I, it says I have Helen of Windhorn number five. I doubt I'm getting Helen of Windhorn number five, even if it's actually coming out next week. But also, we just got a Helen of Windhorn book at the beginning of the month. We'll see, but I'll, um, I'll touch on it very briefly. But I would, wouldn't be surprised if next week I come back and say that I didn't have anything. But so then, after I talk about those, uh, I can talk a little bit more about Comic-Con and what I'm expecting to do when I'm there. Because I've got to do a little more research since we last spoke. So, I have a, a somewhat of a game plan, so we'll see how it goes. World's Finest number 31 was very good. Um, it was an extremely exciting story. Adrian Gutierrez is the new artist, so there's no more Dan Moore on World's Finest, which is sad, but we can make it work. And, um, so, Gutierrez did a pretty good job. There, there's little, little quirks in his art that just aren't my favorite, but overall, I think I still really liked it. The, it was a really exciting story. I mean, Mark Wade has it hasn't dropped at all on, on his quality in this series, so I thought that this was a really cool start to one, um, to, a, to an arc. And I think it's only going to be three issues, which is, is different. Um, it makes me a little worried that it's going to get cancelled. Uh, it seems like maybe Wade knows something that we don't. Um, but Gutierrez did a good job, and Tamara Bond villain, who is the best colorist in the comic industry at the moment, uh, is it was awesome in this and it's it, it further confirms the fact that while I love Dan Morris art and he deserves every bit of praise that he gets that Tamara Bond villain does not get enough of the praise for how great some of the art is in, in these books um, it, it's just it's so vibrant and retro and I just I absolutely love it um yeah, she, she's the she's the best in the business right now. To, to me, there's, it's not even really that close. I can't even think of who would be a second close, uh, close second rather. So, yeah, no, I mean, World's Finest 31. Um, I I still figured it would be good even without Dan Mora, um, but I was actually a little bit surprised at how good it was. So, um, definitely excited that that's going to keep going. I hope it's not going to be canceled, um, but. I'm excited. I'm excited for it. I, I, want, I want it to keep it going. Uh, the Last Halloween number zero was a reprint of the the uh, Long Halloween special, uh, which I had on my wish list for a while because I'd never read it. Uh, I I had been meaning to read it on uh, DC uh, Universe Infinite, but uh, I after reading the Long Halloween digitally and then reading it um, in print I decided that I don't want to read any more Tim Sale art or read books with any more Tim Sale art uh, digitally because again I have no issue with digital reading digitally but some things need to be enjoyed some things just need to be enjoyed in print right and that's one of them so uh, I was glad to get this. I actually didn't realize when I bought it 
that it was a reprint of something, but I was still, I mean, I gave it five stars. It was awesome. I mean, just some fantastic, it's, it's weird with, with Tim Sale's art, like obviously it's extremely stylized and like, it's not, he's not going for realism, but just some of the, the looks that he, he gets from Batman are just like, so dark and brooding and it's not like edgy, but it's, it's just, it's menacing and, and he's this, he, he has this perfect look of a, of the urban legend that sort of he started out as. So it was, it was awesome. I mean, it was, it was really great. Um, there was one panel in particular that I loved where part of the story is that, um, someone has captured uh, Gilda Dent and Two-Face comes to Batman and says like I need your help first of all he smashes half of the bat signal the, uh, the bat signal right so that when it shines in the sky it's like a bat symbol but like the Two-Face version of it which is awesome and then he there's this one great panel and I'll put it up on the screen where Harvey Dent is you get a side profile of Two-Face and you can only see his scarred side. And Batman had just asked him, like, if if we do this, we do it my way, you can't kill Calendar Man, which is the guy that kidnapped um, Gilda. And you see just Two-Face's side and the lettering used for Harvey because they split the lettering between Harvey and Two Face, which to me, to me, if you're a letterer and you don't change the lettering for when Harvey's talking and when Two Face is talking, then that's a, a massive miss in my opinion. But so he says deal, but it's Harvey's letter, right? So he's talking out of both sides of his mouth, right? Both the the saying and literally he can see, like, it, it's foreshadowing that that Harvey's going to kill Calendar Man. I don't think it happens in this book, but I think that that's what we're going to get into in the last Halloween. So, um, I'm really excited to see where that goes. I was thinking about, I was thinking about trade waiting in, but I don't know if I can do that. I think I might need to just pull it but my bullet is already so, so heavy. So, we'll see. I don't know. It's a lot. Ice Cream Man number 41. It was a, a spy story. Um, and I, I, I posted a, a quick review of this on Leave Comic Geeks, and, and so I'll say it again here. Like, they'll let... They, they literally just said to W. Maxwell Prince and Martin Morazzo and Chris O'Halloran, like, you guys could... Here's, here's your book, Ice Cream Man. You can do whatever you want. <laughs> and they do. They do whatever they want. And it always rocks. I mean, these two, or these three, I'll say, these three are just fantastic storytellers. I mean, this was, this was, I mean, a commentary on several levels, right? Um, but it was just a good story, you know? Like... It was, it was exciting, and it was pretty gory, to be honest. Um, this was my first experience with uh, Ricardus, because I only, I'd only read um, number 39, and Ricardus doesn't show up in that, but he does show up in this one, so I was excited for that. Um, but yeah, so that was Ice Cream Man number 41, plus the cover which I featured in my, as num the number one cover of the week in my video last week, the top five covers. Um, the cover was, was a James Bond homage. And it's, it's awesome because you got Ricardo standing there in the, in the white tuxedo. Um, but he, he, instead of holding a gun, well, so first of all, his tuxedo is white instead of black like James Bond because he's the ice cream man. And his, instead of holding a gun, he's holding an ice cream cone. 
which is it's just it's funny and brilliant. Yeah, so Ice Cream Man number 41 was awesome. I like that one a lot. I read Superman number 18. So this was a tie-in. I kind of accidentally pulled this because I think I think what happens at my local comic shop is um, so on previews I I put that I wanted my subscription to start at 19, which I believe is the the all-in issue where um, Dan Mora is going to start on art for Superman. Um, but since it's on my subscription list, um, the other these other ones have gotten thrown in my file. So I've ended up buying 17 and 18, which is fine because you know it's it's cool to have a couple of tie-ins. Um, truthfully, if I had picked specifically which tie-in potentially I was going to go with it would have been the Batman one because Batman and Catwoman trying to find a mother box sounds pretty cool um, but I'll go back and read that eventually um, so yeah so this was um, Superman and Satana uh, sort of doing their thing uh, I don't know how important it is to I guess they're so okay so I guess Superman and Zatanna are trying to reach out through the multiverse to find people to help them fight Amanda Waller because she was able to because essentially what I guess what she did is she took everyone's superpowers and um, she took everyone's superpowers and did not take people in the multiverse's superpowers, right? So I guess that's maybe a bit too much for her. Um, but did cut off their access to the multiverse by placing this guardian who... It, I don't think it's the Batman, Superman, Green Lantern amalgam. But I think they were just likening it to that because it, it didn't quite look like him. So I don't know what people are combined to create that that character, but it looked sweet. So I was I was here for that. Uh, meaningful to the story because I think that they're now going to go through the multiverse to gather people to help them fight Waller. And um, so we'll see. I mean, I feel like I might have missed some stuff because there's stuff going on with with uh, Green Arrow that they were talking about. And as far as I know, just from reading the main Absolute Power books and these Superman tie-ins, um, I don't I don't know what Green Arrow is doing. He, it's not being shown here. I, I think that that's that might be the Absolute. Power Task Force Seven, maybe something like that. Um, I'm not sure what what series it's happening in, but something's happening with Green Arrow, so I need to get caught up on that. But yeah, Superman was good. Um, like I said, sort of an accidental pull, but that's okay. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I'm excited for next. I think next month is all in. Yeah, because it's September, so October is all in. So really excited for Dan Mora. I'm not particularly excited for Lois to have superpowers. I don't like that dynamic. Um, but I like Dan Mora enough. And I like Superman enough. And I like Lois enough to pull the book anyway. Um, I just hope it's not like a permanent thing. I hope it's like we give one arc where we do the Grant Morrison All-Star Superman superpowers thing and then we go back to Lois just being awesome without superpowers. Let me talk about a few other things that I read. <laughs> um, I finished up the the gang war tie-ins from Miles Morales Spider-Man, uh, which was fun. That was a good a good series. Uh, I'm starting to sort of get a more of an appreciation for um, why, apart from the representation side of things there should be a Miles Morales Spider-Man and a Peter Parker Spider-Man. Because for a while, I, I just had trouble understanding, like, okay, what makes them different as characters? They're both young. Obviously, Miles is younger than Peter, but at one point, 
Peter was Spider-Man at Miles' stage, and we, we like we read those stories. Um, but like a young Spider-Man who like jokes around and like you know, it's it's a different dynamic for sure. And, and I I'm starting to realize that, so that's good. Obviously, the the representation side of things with Miles being, I believe he's black and Hispanic, so there's val obviously value there. Um, but I think that stories that rely solely on representation as the reason for their existence end up not being that good because it doesn't provide good representation. Then. But that's you know that's one person's opinion. But Miles having to juggle his family and their safety. Obviously, Peter has to do that with Aunt May, but it's a very different scenario, because Aunt May is, I mean, she's always been this old woman, except for in the MCU. And, um, and so, Miles has his parents, and I'm guessing, like, his sister, maybe, um, that he has to help with. And so, he's, like, he's obviously, like, going through, like, some mental health issues with it, which I think a lot more grounded and real than watching Peter Parker just self-sabotage his life. Although, that's also real, you know? So, it kind of shows two sides of one point. But either way, right? You're getting a little further into the the Miles Morales Peter Parker mythos than, than I intended to. But the Gang War tie-ins were good. Um, I liked them. Um, I'm going to try to say the artist's name. Federico Visitini, I think is how you say it. Um, very good artist. Uh, very dynamic. Extremely dynamic. So I have... I, I, I really like the art. I think one thing is that it sort of... It overwhelms me a bit. There's a lot going on on every single page. There There is very little break on any of these pages. Which... I mean, it's it's a, it's absolutely a style choice, right? And it's a it's it's just a lot, it's a lot to go through. Um, but that's a very minor complaint, in my opinion. So very much, uh, very much appreciated the art. Uh, Ziegler does a good job of of writing. I mean, I, overall, very well done. It it felt. And, and I, I always complain about the event interruptions for Miles Morales and, and kind of use it as an excuse as to why I don't pull it. But this barely felt like like an, an event tie-in. Like, technically, yeah, like it has to do with Hobgoblin, um, you know, buying for his piece of New York City. It's almost like they tied Gang War into the existing Miles Morales story as opposed to tying Miles Morales' book into gang war, which is, I think, much better. I have almost all the way through uh, Captain America Volume 1 by JMS. I'll say JMS because I'm not going to butcher his last name. Straczynski? Straczynski? J. Mike, J. Michael Straczynski? I don't know. That. Um, he's a really good writer. I mean, he's a really good writer. I don't know that, I don't know how I feel about it in the comic book format. I guess it works really well visually, so I can't complain there. But he's a he's a very good writer. I mean, just having him run these these parallel stories of Steve Rogers as a, as a kid, you know, and Steve Rogers now, I, I love it. I'm here for it. But the, the story is really good. Um, JMS has a, a fantastic voice for Cap, so yeah, that, that's 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 a good one. I, again, I, my pull list is too full. I, I just can't do it, but <laughs> um, I highly recommend it. If you're able to pull it, then you probably should. But uh, yeah, so it, it's it's very good. I, I'm almost done with it. I think I just have one issue left in the volume, but, but yeah. So next week, um, maybe Helen of Gwynor number five. Um, it ended in a sweet spot, but 
again, I'm just not convinced that I'm going to get it. So, <laughs> uh, I, I'm, uh, if this is your, you know, if this is your first video watching, I want to, I want to touch on Helen Quinn more in a bit. But um, for anyone else, I mean, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be covering this next week. I'm positive because it's, it's a, uh, it, I just think it's unlikely that it's even coming out next week. But. Helen of Windhorn number five. Um, so Helen of Windhorn is this like high fan, not even high fantasy, but this like fantasy book um, where it's like very literature based. Um, Helen's dad is a fantasy writer and her grandfather takes her to this crazy world where they fight all these different beasts. Um, but we left off with Helen sort of shrugging off her grandfather, right? So I'm excited to see kind of where that goes. Um, but she developed into something of a, like a kind of a drunk brat into a total badass. So, I mean, I, I, I think it's going to be, I think it's going to continue to be good. Um, but it's, yeah, I mean, Bill Kuz Evely's art, again, I mean, I said it, I think, two weeks ago. I say it every time we have Helen of Winterhorn. Uh, it's gorgeous. It's just, it's beautiful, beautiful art. I highly recommend it. So, Baltimore Comic Con. So, my game plan, uh, I've got a handful of creators that I'm going to talk to. Um, and based on the, how I'm planning on the timing of publishing these videos... Uh, you might get to see me talk to a few of these creators before you even see this video. But, um, but yeah, the, uh, the, there's a handful of creators I'm going to talk to. Um, I, I have a few panels I'm lined up to see. There's a, there's a lettering panel, which... Uh, if anyone, anyone who frequents the, uh, the channel knows, I love lettering. Uh, I love good lettering. And I, I think I, I even earlier mentioned, uh, there's two faces lettering, uh, very important. So I love lettering. I'm very excited for the lettering panel. Um, so I'll be, I'll definitely be putting a video out for that. Um, I have, I'm going to attend the Oni Press panel. I, I want to try to attend the Mad Cave panel, but I, I just don't know that I'm going to be able to fit it in the schedule, so we'll see. Um, I am going to go to the DC and the 80s panel, which is exciting. Uh, and there's uh, there's a Batman panel, uh, Batman at 85. It's the, I guess it's the 85th anniversary, and today is Batman Day. Um, Although you'll be seeing this on Wednesday, the Wednesday after Batman Day. Um, but, yeah, so I'm very excited for those panels. But we'll see. I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to get some autographs, too. Uh, I brought no one. I forget what number it is, but it's one of my variant covers that has um, the Duquesne Ink line on it. Uh, then for Kyle Higgins to sign for no one. Uh, I brought Hulk number one for Philip Kennedy Johnson to sign. Very excited to see where this goes. Um, so I've got lots of stuff planned. Um, and so, you know, hopefully, you know, if you haven't been following the videos that I've been posting, because I'm hoping to post a handful of them before this one on Wednesday and a couple after right? So I am very excited to, for everyone to see them. Uh, if you've missed them, go check them out on my channel. Uh, I'll probably do some video cards for a bunch of them. Um, oh, Franco, uh, of Tiny Titans. I'm going to interview him. And he, uh, and I have a copy of the Action Cat trade that, uh, belongs to my kids. And I'm going to have them sign it. So they can have that. So that's, that's going to be, that'll be pretty cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm excited. We'll see, we'll see where it goes. 
Um, and in about, I'll be there in about 10 minutes. Um, and I'm going to be live streaming, kind of going in. So, uh, we will, we will see how it goes. I'm, I'm very excited. I feel like I've said, we'll see how it goes. And I'm very excited several times, but I think it's just because of it. So make sure you like the video. Make sure that you subscribe. Check out my other videos here. And thank you so much for watching.